Hey everybody, Donna Lewis here at Breathe Life Ministries. And I just want to start a little early with our Ezekiel Bible study so that I can make sure that I'm, I'm ready to be able to see all your comments and all that good stuff and give you all a minute to get online and get your Bibles open and uh, share this video and just uh, allow everybody to participate. So I'm just going to make sure that I can see people's comments here. And I want to to make sure that I can Oops. see people's comments here. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I'm set. I am good to go, folks. And if you comment, I'm going to be able to see it. So anyway, we've been in the book of Ezekiel, and we have been taking our time as we have been studying this uh, particular prophetic book of the Bible. And uh, if you haven't yet joined us, you you know you're you're starting at a really good place because we are just now getting into chapter two, and it's just the very beginning of chapter two. I am discovering that this particular book of the Bible is so rich in wisdom and just, wow, um, oh, wow, how do I even describe it? I, what I'm gaining from this is that it's, it's, a handbook for anyone who wants to live a life that is fruitful, um, productive, and lasting. And it all begins with the understanding of who God is and who we are as his creation. It's understanding the order, the government of God, and having humility in that awareness and understanding. So let's get started. Let's get rolling. And again, if you're just now joining, uh, go ahead and give me a shout out. Let me know you're there. And I do have the ability to respond to your comments. There's a slight delay with Zoom, so I don't see your comments as soon as you post them. So give it a few seconds so that I have a chance to actually see your comments and then I can respond to them. And feel free to comment at any time during this study and share your insights. Also, please, again, do share this video so that others can benefit from this amazing study. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, guys. So here we go. And I'm going to bring this up so that we can see it. Here we go, there we are. Now you can actually see this in the big screen. I'm, I'm on Zoom instead of my Restream app. I love the Restream app because of all of the beautiful graphics and videos that it gave for the backdrop, but the quality of the video wasn't as good. And when it came to actually sharing the slides, it was so small, it was almost impossible to really read the slides. So we're back on Zoom and let's dive in. So again, we're in the book of Ezekiel so that we can learn from the past, we can understand the present, and we can prepare for the future. I am Donna Lewis and this is Breathe Life Ministries. So 
We are in Ezekiel chapter 2 now, and this is where God commissions Ezekiel as his prophet. To review, the name Ezekiel means strengthened by God. And he lived during the time of the first temple's destruction. He was an exile in Babylon, living in a refugee camp along the Kabar River when he received this vision. There had been a five year silence from God as he waited to hear anything, any word at all from God after being put in exile by the Babylonian Empire. He was born the son of a priest named Buzi, and he was called to be a priest in the temple. But of course, he was living in exile, so that was not something that was possible. He was 30 years old when he received this vision, and that is the exact age that he would have begun his first um, service as a priest in the temple of God. We begin this passage at the very end of chapter one, where we leave the prophet face down before the throne of God. He had seen this bewildering vision of God's throne, and it left him paralyzed face down in the ground. He describes it this way, like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice of one speaking. He is fully prostrate, his face in the dirt, and he is unable to lift himself from that. And he's hearing the sound of this tremendous thunder all around him, and it's the voice of God. It reminds me of James 4.10 where James says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. He will lift you up. He will raise you to your feet. I'm struck by how Ezekiel is completely wrecked by the awareness of who God is, how mighty he is, his eternal nature, his absolute sovereignty, his perfect holiness. the awesome power of God. It wrecks him and leaves him face down in the dirt, unwilling, unable to move. And then he waits for the command. He's been waiting. He's been waiting five years <laughs> in absolute silence. And then he hears the voice of the Lord. Son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. 
when God calls Ezekiel son of man, it's not the same thing as when Jesus referred to himself as the son of man. The usage of that language from Jesus is referring to messianic terminology of himself as the Messiah. This particular use is as though God were addressing Ezekiel human listen to me stand up and i'm going to talk to you human it's a term of humbling it's allowing ezekiel to absorb who he is the created son of dust his origins are from Adam, the created is hearing from the creator. And God wants to make it clear to Ezekiel, he is the created and the creator is speaking to him. When he says stand, he is saying, give me your full attention. Hear me. I want all the bewilderment to stop and I want you to hear what I have to say to you. We as humans tend to forget who God is and who we are. This is all preparation of Ezekiel. Everything leading to this moment, including this moment, is God preparing Ezekiel for his purpose. We are vessels of purpose. We are clay pots made by the divine for a specific purpose of the divine. Then we come to Ezekiel 2.2, where he's raised with power. I'm reminded of a scripture in the New Testament just now where it says, for it is by grace you are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. When Ezekiel is raised to his feet, it's not his own power lifting him up it is literally the power of god bringing him to his feet and providing him with full attentiveness to what god is about to say then the spirit entered me when he spoke and set me on my feet and i heard him who spoke to me so God gives the command, stand to your feet, and then he literally fills him with his Holy Spirit and stands him to his feet. What this says to me is that we must wait for the Lord and then he fills us with his spirit. His voice speaks to us and 
His power raises us. Have you ever gotten totally messed up because you put the cart before the horse? <laughs> I have way too many times. I got moving too fast and uh, got out in front of my skis and then I went for a tumble. I used to ski both snow and water and there would be times I would lean way too far forward and then I was in for a tumble. It's so important to keep our posture correct. And remain in the Spirit of God. Don't get out in front of Him and don't lag behind Him. Stay in the center of who He is and it's His power that moves us. Preparation before purpose. Wow, this has been hitting me square in the middle of the forehead. We think we're ready. I mean, how often, how often have we, again, gotten out in front and said, oh, I'm all ready. I'm ready. I'm all prepared. I, I've taken my beatings and I've, you know, had my nose ground in the dirt long enough and I know who I am and who you are and it's time to let me go to work. Oh, wow. That's a sure sign that it's time for some more waiting. Um, it's time for some more face plants at the throne of God. And yes, the waiting is the hardest part. We often, I mean, I don't know about you, but I know me and I know where I have been even recently. And it's how, you know, how much more humble can I be God? How much more, you know, patient can I be? Uh, a lot. <laughs> a lot would be the answer. Ezekiel waited in awe and revelation of who God is. compared to who he is. He waited in humility, soaking in the reality and truth of his humanity before the throne of God. And if it was a million years before the throne of God, so be it. He was perfectly prepared to be whatever it was God had for him in that moment. Face down before his throne. When, when we allow the awe, the fear of the Lord 
it is a combination of terror and love at the same time to be in the fear of the Lord. There is an element of horror because we are the created standing before the creator. We stand in awe of an enormous mountain, our smallness compared to its greatness. We stand in awe of lions, tigers, leopards, because of their enormity and power compared to our frailty. This is what it means to fear the Lord. We must be in that state of mind before we are able to step into purpose. And this is what God had been doing and was doing in Ezekiel before launching him into purpose. How often are people destroyed because they have lost sight of the reverence of God. They've become cavalier. They've become arrogant. They've gotten to the place where they take God for granted. They're too busy doing their job to have any time for the boss. <laughs> And that's where we run into trouble every single time. Let's, let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> so, what we're seeing here is that Ezekiel has been in a time of preparation for the last five years. It began with being ripped from his home in Israel violently, drug across a thousand miles of wilderness at the tip of a sword, and then brought to a foreign country in Babylon and made to live along a drainage ditch known as the Kabar River in an exile camp, a refugee camp. He waited with his king held captive with a bunch of other angry, bitter, resentful, traumatized Israelites, he himself being one of them, wondering what all that time in school was for. I mean, he'd been in training to become a priest. 
is 25. He'd been in school preparing and told his whole life he was going to be a priest serving in the temple of God. And now here he sat along the Kabar River in silence with nothing but bitterness and rage all around him and tyranny for five years. And then suddenly he experiences a vision from God that was mind boggling. And Ezekiel was a man of detail. He saw every little tiny detail and wrote it down. It was a mind boggling vision. And then he's laid flat on his face before the very throne of God, hearing the thundering, roaring voice of God echoing all around him. And then he's filled by the Spirit of God. What an awesome experience that had. Perfect love, perfect holiness, perfect justice, absolute power, sovereignty, and heartbreak, which is what we're going to be hearing next week. The heartbreak of God. It's about preparation before purpose. Are you waiting? Are you bewildered? Take courage. Remain there in that position of awe and wonder. Allow God's Spirit to fill you with His awesomeness. Be willing to be humbled and broken before His throne. He will raise you to your feet. So take heart. If you're in a time of preparation right now, which we all are, take heart, take courage, and allow yourself to be humbled at the throne of God. Okay, so if this uh, is blessing you, please let me know. Uh, share this video, like this video. If you're watching on the recast, go ahead and leave your comments. And I will be back here next week. God bless. Love you much.